Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how I made this bead which is being blurry so I'm just going through the magic of editing to put in a picture of it. So this bead. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so I'm here at my torch. I heated up my mantle and I'm melting down some just white glass to make the core of my bead. And I want to start off with a pretty generous blob. Um, I'm experimenting with using stringers for like the first time. So, or rather this is my first day of messing about with stringers. So I wanted to get some, like, document some of that process. And I'm getting a very, very generous blob now. Letting it cool just a bit. This is a really like soupy <clears throat> glass. And if there are any points that I feel like I need more glass on there, um, I heat it up a bit and then I'm coming through and kind of just touching it on to build up and around. <clears throat> Looks like how we did there. And so now I went to heat and melt it in. started off a little too hot on the glass, I do think, and that made it just a little too soupy, but we recovered okay. I say we. I'm not like, I'm not cray cray or anything, I just, it, it feels like uh, whenever I'm shooting videos like this, and I, I treat it like I'm talking, you know, to, to you in the room with me, <clears throat> and it's actually just my camera standing there, so hashtag quarantine, I guess. <laughs> so, I'm getting just a bit of glass. Touch, 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 touch. Functioning with the glass still in the flame just a bit because that actually melts more of the glass and lets me lay it on just a little bit faster. And if we keep building up uh, a little edge like this, building up more and more layers, then we can come in and melt it down onto the core of our glass again. So I think I'm going to do another layer. Let's see if I can do a very big glob. It's the bigger the glob, the less control I feel like I have over the distribution of the glass. Because it, it becomes more susceptible to gravity, the more flowy it is feels like. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology at all, I'm just thinking out loud. So, I'm not a scientist or even really a professional glass worker at all, I'm just kind of bumping around into stuff. So be patient with me. Okay, changing hands. I'm not gonna like, that looks like a patty pan splash. Ah, I should try to make a little lamp with the vegetables, like out of the garden. I just, actually yesterday I planted some more patty pan splash out in my raised beds. So I'm just heating this up. I don't want to get the core of the bead soupy. I just want to come through and hit the edges. That way they'll melt down over the core, but I don't want to distort the whole shape of everything. as the glass heats and slumps, it comes in closer towards the center point. I'm trying very hard to keep my mandrel horizontal because if I tip it one way or the other, then gravity <clears throat> will pull it towards, you know, that way. Now that is something that I like practicing with to kind of use that to my advantage because if you know how the glass is going to behave, you can kind of anticipate it and use that to make changes that you want to see in your glass. Okay. It's looking pretty. 
pretty good. I'm a little lopsided maybe, but that's normal at this point. <laughs> it's so lumpy and weird, just like me. That's fine. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. And so now I want to come through with, um, with our glass. And I want to start at the top. So I'm going to touch and then cut and then touch. I also feel like I need to be working maybe much further out in the flame because I did this on another bead that we got some video of that I don't know if I'm going to use that footage yet or not, um, but I think I scorched the heck out of it, so we'll have to see how that works. Okay, so let's start melting these in just a bit. realized I probably been speaking kind of quietly. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Changing my hand position so that I'm holding both my rod and my stringer, uh, or my mandrel and my stringer, and like they're pencils. Ooh, it's getting hot. hands getting kind of close to the flame. Oh boy. And touch. Uh, touch. Uh, touch. I think I'm going to leave that at that. Set that down there. Now I'm going to keep this all up nice and even. I feel like I could do to add some more dots though. I'm just saying. Let's see if I can't pick up a slightly longer stringer. That way my hand isn't like in the flame as much. And touch and cut. And touch and cut. And touch and cut. That side is getting a little too hot, so I'm gonna go and work on the other side for a minute, touch and cut, and touch and cut, and touch and cut. There we go. Yeah, I like that. And if you feel like you have any like little naked spots or anything like that, um, you could fill them in. I'm pretty happy with that placement though. And so now, having used a white core, I am going to come through with a pale yellow, like a straw yellow. And I'm just going to be heating this up a bit. You know, I don't know if this actually, that's not a straw yellow, that is a translucent orange. Here is our straw yellow. Sorry, I've got purple glasses on, so I can't really see colors again. But I am going to use this to encase our bead. I'm going to keep melting this in just a little bit. And so you can see how that's getting nice and red hot. And the more we melt these little nodules of glass that we've added, the more they'll incorporate and flatten out into the bead base. There we go. We can actually focus some heat on each of the ends, melt those in evenly as well. Ooh, and that's giving us some nice proper polka dots. I love the polka dots. Absolutely 
that's actually keeping its coloration pretty well too. So again, I don't want to heat this up so much that we lose our bead shape or anything like that. Um, and I also don't want it soupy or malleable at all, really. I just I want to keep the bead warm. Uh, that way we're not experiencing any thermal shock. So I'm just going to really get a big old, big old, big old blob of this. Actually, I, I'm, I'm still learning how to encase. Like, I'm, I'm new to all of this, but I'm even newer still at encasing because on my hot head torch, I just felt like I had such a hard time trying to get... You know, if it, I couldn't make a bead bigger than this on that there, I felt like, because I couldn't get it, like, hot. Um, so I'm going to see if maybe just touching it like this. How's that doing? Meh. Instead of trying to just blob it all around, it's getting a little bit of bubbling on the glass. Okay. So I think I'm heating it up too, too high. I think that's what that means, at least. Keeping everything moving, keeping everything heating all over, nice and, nice and hot. But also, part of the reason of wanting to do this encasing with the straw yellow is because with the white core, uh, this will give the whole bead a nice yellowy tint. So we can we can practice some color theory and messing about with like the opacity of the glasses that we're using and get some really cool effects. I'm anticipating, I'm hoping. I say anticipating, but mostly at this point, I'm like, yeah, I hope this works. Because <laughs> also, some of the glasses, depending on what metals they are colored with, um, they, some of the different glasses can react with each other. So I'm also trying to learn and keep track of what glasses react with which ones and how that looks and if that's desirable or because I'm not going to say any, nothing's ever wrong in art, it's just sometimes that's not the effect that you want it. And that's okay. So I'm coming in with not a whole lot of uh, expectations. I kind of just, I'm here for the journey. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be getting all zen and stuff, but it's on these, these earliest beads, because I'm hoping to do lamp work for decades to come, and I, so I'm being very forgiving with myself uh, in these, what will hopefully be my earliest beads. Um, well, hopefully, it's, they are my earliest beads, but I don't know, I think you get what I mean. I think I've encased everything. So I'm going to turn our heat up just a little bit more. Put a little more gas behind it. And now... And I just want to get the surface. Uh, I don't want the center of our bead to get all soupy. Just want to get the outside nice and hot. I try to do as much as I can just with heat and gravity without having to resort to using my marver. Um, but I don't know, let's see how it works. Is the marver even in frame? No, the marver's not in frame, so we're going to do it all in the flame. <clears throat> Because also, you know, if I'm at somebody else's studio or something, I might not always have a marker on hand. So I wanted to sort out how to do this with as few tools as possible. I do prefer to just do it all over. 
Okay, I might be able to move the... Nope. Okay, I was going to try to move the camera so that you all can see the marker. Um, I don't know how well that's going to work right now. Don't be afraid to pull out of the heat. And this is something mostly advice for myself because I'm always like, I ah, just, you know, <laughs> the answer to everything is not always just more fire. Um, sometimes pulling it out of the heat and letting it adjust is sometimes the best thing you can do. Because you can always add in more heat and you can always turn it to soup just straight molten lava. Um, you can always do that later, but let's try all some alternatives first. Very cool. Okay, I think that's going to be just as good as I can get it. So I'm cooling it just a bit out here. Uh, I, want I want the glass to get to where it's not sticky anymore. So it's going to start losing that cherry glow. And also if I can, the whole idea behind annealing is to get all of the molecules of glass uh, the same temperature so they're all vibrating the same so that it maintains the same tension as it dries, or not dries, but as it cools. Um, and if sometimes, you know, the surface will cool quicker than the center will or vice versa, you know, Thermodynamics is, <laughs> I'm new to that too, apparently. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's where we're going to stick that in the kiln and let it cool down proper. So it is the following morning, and I've pulled the beads out of the kiln. And the straw yellow does not <laughs> look as yellow as I thought it would. Um, whoop. There we go. Cleaning up the bead in the, or cleaning the bead off of the mandrel. And I'm going to come through just with a little bead reamer. Now, this is an opaque bead. Like the, the white in the center keeps you from seeing the middle of the bead. But I still, so it's not as obvious as what it would be on like a fully translucent bead if there's any bead release left in the center. But I still think it's good form just to get it nice and clean. There we are. Okay, let's take a look at this bead. Now we have a little bit of pinching here from where I did the encasing, pulling the base layer, like the base colors, up towards the surface. But I, I honestly think that gives it some really nice variation. And you can see here, that's how the white looks, and that's how it looks with that straw yellow over it. So it's actually a very, very subtle yellow. I wonder how that would look layered over like a blue though, but you can see where I completely missed <laughs> the encasing. Um, the encasing came out really thick there and kind of lumpy and weird. I don't know, I kind of like it lumpy and weird though. Good shaping though on both of the ends. It has that nice like smooth, donutted shaping. I like that. But that's pretty cool almost looks like um, one of those toxic frogs or you know like um, I don't know it reminds me of a lizard that was it the from the book holes the yellow spotted lizards or something I don't know looks like something that if you licked it you'd get ill <laughs> but yeah that's a pretty good beat I like that as usual tons of room for improvement but Super durable. 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me during this video. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. There are links in the video description where you can contact us as well as where you can find our website that has all pertinent information about like our curated toolkit. That way you can see what tools and materials we were using, um, our calendar of events, how you can support our channel via Patreon, how you can participate in our um, craft along kits and all, all sorts of different stuff that we're doing here at Back to Earth Creations. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I really do hope that this was helpful to you. Uh, and until next time, you guys, uh, thanks for watching and happy crafting. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>